But are good people out here on my delivery grind? Yes, I am. However, today's delivery grind sucks. Like there's nothing going right with the deliveries today. The app is waiting out. You get into the spots where you have to use your card in order to pay for the stuff. Their Wi-Fi is out, so they're only taking cash. Canceling orders left and right is driving me crazy. So I'm back up in the whip. While I'm here, I might as well do a couple reviews. Huh? All right, let's make the time work for us. So while I'm out here, let's talk movies. Yes, you know, we know that my channel was based on reviews. Right now, y'all can check Mike and Josh. Hashtag Mike and Josh. Hashtag Mike and Josh, we hungry. Hashtag Mike and Josh, we hungry. Food reviews. You know what I'm saying? And the In the Whip reviews. Okay. On the channel, The Maestro 117. We're literally out here. Now, the thing about it, when I first started the channel it was all about reviews movie reviews in particular because you know i love movies i be in there the movie theater every single day everybody was like how can you afford to go to the movies every single day yo because i had that regal i had that regal unlimited pass you know what i'm saying that was the thing that was going i paid like 24.99 a month and I can see all the movies I wanted, as many times as I wanted, for free. And you think I did? Your boy was in there. Unfortunately, so was every COVID-19 and disease known to mankind. And now I can't go see my movies, man. Okay, theaters is shut down. What am I supposed to do? We got a stream now, ladies and gentlemen. I got every streaming platform known to mankind. I got Android. So there's an app or an APK for that. Holler at your boy in the comments if you need to know the latest joints to use in order to stream whatever you want to see. Cinematic goodness, sports goodness, pay-per-view goodness. I got you covered. Let's talk movies. So yo, it's about the streaming game now. When it comes to my movies, I grade hard, you feel me? Even though I be looking for stuff to give these things a good score for 0.75, 4.5 out of 5, 5 out of 5, well, there's only been one 5 out of 5 as far as movies go, but I'm always looking for a reason to score high in the movies because I just love that cinematic universe, man. I love the cinematic bliss. I love the darkness. I love the you know, in there with the crowd while you watch your Michael Myers chase somebody down and everybody's got butterflies in their stomach. I love that. But we can't do that anymore because yeah, get back six feet, 12 feet. Are you breathing in my direction? Wait, did you just clear your throat? And you spraying them in the face with Lysol. That's where we're at right now. Okay, if anybody clears their throat, God forbid a booger goes down their windpipe or something happens and it's like, <clears throat> And everybody in line is looking at him like, yo, for real though? Did you just <clears throat> in line? It's on and popping, it's crazy right now. So now you gotta be home streaming. So I grade on a curve when I'm dealing with made for streaming movies because not all of them will have the budgets that your blockbuster movies will have. Blockbuster movies will have a bigger budget and more stuff to work with. So I tend to grade on a curve but made for streaming platform movies, they have been bringing it. They have been bringing it in the past few months and I have to say, I've watched a lot of stuff via Hulu, via Netflix, via certain apps, not to be named, but hit me up in the comments. Um, Amazon Prime has been bringing it. So now I'm reviewing shows, series, and made for streaming platform movies. Uh, my grading curve will be a little bit more lax. Just give me a great story, you know what I'm saying? I'm not expecting super, super duper special effects and things like that. Although the latest movies have been bringing it on Netflix and Amazon Prime and all these other platforms. But uh, 
I digress. Just to let you know that, you know, I grade with a little bit of a curve when it comes to the made for, you know, streaming movies. Today's feature. Bad hair. Hulu, baby. Hulu is out there um, for all your streaming needs. You got a few made for Hulu originals. Some of the Hulu originals are actually fire, and I will be reviewing them, letting you know, yo, when you get some time, you should check this out, or you should check that out. I got some for Amazon, and I got some for Netflix, and I got some sleepers out there too. But right now, we're gonna do bad hair. So, bad hair. Hulu original, sleeper, okay? Starring your girl, Elle Lorraine, plays Anna Bloodsoe, all right? You know her from Insecure, and you also know her from Dear White People, all right? You can check her out. She's got acting jobs. Um, we also have Jay Farrow, comedian, impressionist, this dude does probably one of the best Will Smiths I've ever heard. Uh, he does a very, very good Cat Williams. He's got a few under his belt, and he's killing it. But he's out here, and he's making a name for himself. He was in this, he plays a character named Julius. And he is known for Saturday Night Live, and you may have seen him in Two Minutes of Fame. It's pretty good. We got a girl, Vanessa Williams. She plays a character named Zora. And of course, you know her as Miss America, the former Miss America. She's also known for Eraser, where she starred alongside um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it was very, very good. I actually like that one. Okay. Kelly Rowland. Y'all know her. Okay, she plays Sandra. Destiny's Child, y'all know that. Um, She's also known for uh, Freddy vs. Jason. She was in there. I can't remember if she was the first person to get killed. You already know, black people get killed first. But she may have survived, I don't know. I don't know if she was the first one, so that would be interesting. I'll have to check that out. Uh, do we also have, who else? Blair Underwood, a veteran and legend. Blair Underwood is killing it. He plays Amos. Blood so okay. All right, y'all know this cat. Just cause rules of engagement, countless, countless amount of uh, voiceovers. He's cameos in a lot of stuff. He's been in everything. You know what I'm saying? He, he's been in everything, like everything. Uh, the made for TV series, the event, which was actually pretty good. He played the president. He's, he's, he's out here. Y'all know him. And um, some cameos. Let's name some cameos out here. Which surprised me. Which actually made it worth the watch. You got... Usher. And also MC Light makes an appearance. Uh, she's made appearances in other things. But she makes an appearance as a hairdresser. In this particular one. And let's get to the story. So basically... Anna's character um, is trying to move up in the corporate world. They all work for a TV studio. Uh, this takes place back in the late 80s where music videos were really starting to pop off. And she is trying to make it in the corporate world. She's trying to move up. She's been an assistant for over 15 years. She knows the company in and out. This is where Urban, black music and rap music, R&B, that sort of thing, are really, really starting to make a push, but we can't get any airplay on white music stations. And if so, we're only getting like an hour or whatever, whatever. So this is where they were starting to try to like start their own, like BET, they start to develop BET and other black music entertainment, networks, channels, and things like that. So basically, it's a, that's the where the storyline surrounds itself. And, she wants to move up. Zora takes over. Vanessa Williams, Zora takes over as the new boss. And she's kind of cleaning house. So she kind of fires the old boss, but not really. You know how these companies do. They 
come in, kind of fire the old boss, but leave them on as a consultant. You know, I don't know why they, they do that. It's a safe face or whatever they're doing. But um, basically, she comes, takes over. She sees Anna's character as like more than just an assistant. She just knows way too much. You know how somebody is at the job and you know that they're like just cruising, working underneath their potential. Like they could be doing so much more for the company, but just trying to stay low key for whatever reason. She sees her potential and is like, look, you know, you're more than an assistant. You could be running one of these segments. I want you to do this, but first you gotta get your hair fixed. You gotta represent. If you're gonna be working with me, you gotta represent. So she sends her to her hairstylist who's into some old black magic type stuff. And yo, this is where it gets crazy. She gets a weave for the very first time. She has a traumatic experience when she was a kid and she decided to keep her hair natural because if you've ever had, you know, chemicals and stuff in your hair, just black women will definitely relate. I can actually relate to this. Black women will definitely relate to this movie in the beginning. She has this very traumatic experience with the hair relaxer that burns her scalp. She's really, really bad. And she's just like, no, never again, I'm not gonna do it. And she never, ever, ever goes to the hairdresser again. She's like, later for that, okay? She goes all natural for her life. She's rocking it and she's doing her thing. But Vanessa was like, nah, nah, nah. Well, Zora it was like, nah, 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 nah. Nah, you gonna represent, you can go get, go get your hair straight with or whatever. Get this weave put in. I got you covered. Go see my hairstylist. Hairstylist is some old voodoo type stuff and puts this hair in her head. The hair has a mind of its own. I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't wanna spoil it too much, but it was supposed to be Halloween feature. So it's like a horror slash kind of thriller type thing. And yo, with the people that were in it and the story, and that weird hair, I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I got nothing else to do. Uh-oh, my vent. I gotta put my vent back in. I got nothing else to do. I am going to go ahead and watch this movie. And I was very, very surprised. I actually enjoyed it. I mean, the effects were okay. The story was okay. If you got nothing else to do and nothing else to watch, go ahead and watch it. Just, you know, just for the people that were in there, the cameos made it fun to watch, but that hair, bro, <laughs> that hair, like, I don't even want to go near another weed after <laughs> I watch this. <laughs> anyway, so yo, I don't want to take up too much time. It's only 13 minutes. I only want to make this thing like eight minutes, but I had to let, let it rock. Um, I had to go ahead and give this bad boy, who made for Hulu, Hulu original, bad hair, a 2.75 out of 5, yo. All right. It was an okay watch. Damn, that hair was creepy. And, yo, that's about it, man. I'm going to hit you with another movie a little bit later on. But as far as it goes... The Hulu original Bad Hair gets a 2.75 from your boy. And uh, damn, I would say I'd see you at the movies, but I guess I'm not, you know? Life is a movie right now, you know? 2020, the sequel coming soon. It's crazy. 2020 has been ridiculous, man. 2020 has been ridiculous. Movies and things like that have been my escape from 2020. There's no real escape, though. It's just like anything that can will happen in 2020 and we still got a couple months left hope you guys have been surviving in the meantime and in between time i will catch you at the movies or streaming the movies all right holla y'all peace I can't eat my heart.